Hi, I'm Gloria Strode and welcome to Straightforward. Today we're having a follow-up interview with the awesome Uma Alapan who has been off on some wonderful adventures. Hi. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. Well, the last time you came, you had gone on this wonderful conference, a national conference for nephrologists yes. with your dad. And you had done this wonderful poster presentation and you met people from all over the world. Something great happened at that conference. Share with our audience what happened and what you've been doing since then. Okay, well at the American Society of Nephrology Conference, I got to meet so many different people. Mm -hmm. And one of those people was a retired FDA scientist. Really? Um, Dr. Mona Calvo is her name. Mm -hmm. And she connected me with one of her, you know, her students. Mm -hmm. um, one of other the research scientists, Dr. Beverly Wolford. And um, so through that connection, I was able to conduct some research with her at the FDA. This summer? Yes. Really? Yes. So just going along with your dad, of course, let's back up. You did a lot of work on a project that started out as a science project. Yes. Is that, is that how it started? Yes. And it was so good that got it got you, you in, in front of, of a, group a group of professionals. professionals at the National Conference for Nephrologists. Yes. By way of that and the quality of your work, you were introduced to some scientists mm -hmm. that were able to connect you with yes. people at the FDA. She actually offered me a internship at the FDA. Really? Yes. And so actually, actually these, volunteers these volunteers can work, can work six, six months, months every, every year. Mm -hmm. And so right now I'm currently working on a research project with uh, Dr. Wolford. Really? Yes. So you actually traveled, you and your father, mm -hmm. uh, who is a local nephrologist, to Washington, D.C.? Yes. And so you were able to go to the FDA. You have an FDA badge. <laughs> I do have a badge. How impressive. And this is your FDA laptop. Yes. And so you're able to work as a research intern. Yes. From Tele Columbus. From you're Columbus, you're telecommuting time. from yes. Columbus to the FDA mm -hmm. and it all started with the science project. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, really, that's very impressive. And what was the project about? I tested the phosphorus levels of different sodas and the pH mm -hmm. and I kind of did a soda consumption survey to see a general pattern and you know, try to prevent health complications in the future um, just to make the public more aware of phosphorus content. You know, there's some negative health implications mm -hmm. of phosphorus that a lot of people aren't aware about. So that's in the sodas like Cokes and RCs yes. and things like that. Yes. And so we, we always hear about the sugar, but a lot of times they're not focusing on the phosphorus. Actually, the phosphorus isn't even mentioned on the label. It doesn't really? actually have the amount. It might say the percentage of phosphorus inside of there, but you know that's really not very helpful. Right, and so the phosphorus is working against your, your kidneys. And so it's, it's just not good for your body. Yes. It's not. Well, phosphorus is an essential element, but too much of phosphorus can right. be harmful for the body. Okay. But actually, right now, my current project at the FDA, mm -hmm. I'm trying to prove um, if excess phosphorus actually does have negative health implications. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm researching and I'm trying to find different articles, different research studies, you know, from all across the world, actually using this computer, right? I have access to all of those studies. Really? Um, and so I can search through and see if there's a correlation between excess phosphorus consumption and negative health outcomes. Really? Mm -hmm. And so when you started that science project, and of course you're a student at Brookstone, mm -hmm. you actually were able to go out to Cot Beverage yes. and use their lab. Yes. So this wasn't something that you just haphazardly you no. really put a lot of research into it on the front end. Yes. And so how was that? That was interesting. It was a, it's a very, you know, they have very precise instruments. I was able to calculate the exact phosphorus of all the sodas. So all the information I have on that one research prode project was mm -hmm. actually, you know, very accurate. Um, and so that was just a wonderful opportunity. Actually, Dr. Prem Vermani, or Mr. Prem Vermani, mm -hmm. he um, gave me the opportunity to work with him at Cot Beverages. Really? Yes. And this is all while you're at Brookstone? Yes. And at that time, you were just a junior. Yes. So now you're- I you're was in 10th grade, actually. 10th grade, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> and so where are you now? You're going into- Senior year. Senior year. Okay, and so when you went to do your presentation in Chicago, mm -hmm. you had your poster. Yes. And you were one of the presenters along with other professionals yes. in the field. 
And so you were able to, what was that, what was that like? like? You were standing, you were standing there, there <laughs> answering, answering questions, explaining, explaining your project? Right. It was a, uh, the first time I walked in, it was a really, there was an academic vibe about it. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone was very professional. All of them were well dressed. They were all inquisitive to learn new things. You know, even though I'm in high school, they mm -hmm. paid attention to me. Some of them took notes. You know, they were very respectful of what I had to say. Right, and um, so they could see that you had put work into the project, yes. and it was something that some of them m might have never thought of before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you were like blazing in a new <laughs> frontier. Yes. And so from that poster, you ended up having that information put in a professional uh, yes. publication. Actually, part of the ASN convention, mm -hmm. um, there's a different, there's lecture halls, and so one of the lectures that I attended was Dr. Mona Calvo. Right. She is the FDA scientist mm -hmm. who gave me the opportunity to work at the FDA. Okay. Um, and so how did your publication make it to Kidney News? Did you just <laughs> submit it or, because it has to be, this is a professional publication. Right. It's not something that, you know, science projects for high schools. So this is something that your, the quality of your work had to be at, the, at standard that standard for it to, for make, it to make national, national publication. Right, right. I didn't expect it to be, it to be you know, you know, accepted, accepted for the poster presentation. presentation. Mm -hmm. I just, at the most, I wanted it accepted in the uh, this journal. Right. Um, actually, this is actually not the journal. This is Kidney News, ASN right. Kidney News. They did an interview after the ASN convention to give my experience on how it is being a high schooler presenting in, in front of you know these medical professionals. professionals. Um, um, so they thought so they this, thought was, this a really was a really important segment to. It you know, is. Highlight. To highlight. Paper. Yeah. Yeah. So now yes. as a student, a high school student, a research intern mm -hmm. for FDA, you've already been published. Yes. That is very impressive. Mm -hmm. So we just expect greater things uh, with this project that you're working on. And what we're going to do, we're going to take a break, go to our sponsors. But then I want you to come back and share with our audience the work you're doing on the sports drinks and the high energy drinks and those things because a lot of the your peers young folks of course some old folks you know drink them too on a daily basis but we need to learn more about that okay we'll be right back we'll be right back after word from some of our sponsors Straight Forward is brought to you by Chalk by Quincy introduces excellence redefined. Tying pieces of the finest technology, luxury, and class with tons of style at chalklifestyle.com. Renal Associates LLC, a team of physicians dedicated to excellent kidney care with five convenient locations to serve you. Stark Avenue, Columbus, Bradley Park, Columbus, Lafayette Parkway, LaGrange, East Burkhalter Avenue, Buena Vista, and Spring Street in Warm Springs. A second chance criminal record relief. Laws have changed in your favor. Attorney Jennifer Dunlap is offering assistance in removing felony and misdemeanor convictions from your record. Services are available for a limited time only. Call Attorney Dunlap today to see if you qualify at 706-405-0393 or visit secondchancelaws.com. Walmart's reason for supporting Thurgood Marshall College Fund is simple. We like to win. And we have been given a lot of exposure to some, to some incredible talent. And we also believe that it's a part of our responsibility to the community to give back. This is a great opportunity to do both. It's been a wonderful experience for us through the years. We've appreciated our partnership. We believe in return on investment, and we have definitely had a remarkable return. Welcome back to Straight Forward. I'm continuing my conversation with the beautiful and brilliant Uma Alipan. Uma, you have really made this community so very proud. You're very conscientious, hardworking, talented in so many areas. Thank I, you, Tim. We're, we're going to talk about a little of that later. Okay. But you are a FDA research intern. intern yes and so you have some important research that you're doing that's important to our health 
So I want you to just share with us what you're working on now, the present project, but then there are some future projects that you're going to be working on, just trying to make sure we stay right. as healthy as we can. So share with our audience a little so about right that. So right now, uh, Dr. Beverly Wolpert is actually the chief of epidemiology. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm considered part of the epidemiology branch of the FDA. Really? <laughs> yes, I have my own email address, you know, part of the branch. I attend all the branch meetings. Um, so it's basically right now I'm working on epidemiology. So you're a part of the team? Yes. Really? Yes. With your own email address? Yes. That's official. You know that's official. That means that you are really a part of, a, of any type of organization once you get an email address. Right. Yeah, okay. So you are uh, able to sit in on conference calls and things like yes. that. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, so right now I'm working on a systematic review. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm doing is through this computer I'm teleworking with the FDA. And so I have access to their whole library of different case studies and clinical trials, things like that. And I'm looking to see if there's, if excess phosphorus leads to any uh, detrimental health outcomes or any, you know, if it has any negative implications. Um, right now, we just assume that phosphorus is correlated with negative health implications, but right now I'm trying to prove that. Right, so you're trying to find the facts. Yes. And so there's a focus on adolescents, and is yes. it some focus? It's mainly focused on adolescents and children, mm -hmm. because I think those, if they are informed about negative phosphorus um, health implications, then it could be prevented in the future. Right, they can change those habits. Right. So maybe they shouldn't be drinking a 24 Coke. ounce Coke every day. Dr. Pepper, you know, those type of sodas that mm -hmm. are dark colored, mm -hmm. mainly Coke, Dr. Pepper, you know, Pib Extra, those kind of things, those have a lot of phosphorus. Okay, um, so the Coke, Dr. Pepper, Pepsi, mm -hmm. and Pib. Pib Extra. Extra. Those type of sodas. We should not be color. drinking those big gulps and all right. of those that some stores sell you for 69 cents. Right. No, you can go to some places and buy the big cup for 69 mm -hmm. cents every day. So you want to change the behaviors of our young people. Mm -hmm. So our kids and our teenagers, the, just to say, we don't want to do that because we want to make sure that you can be your best healthy self right. as an adult. And then maybe we can cut back on some of those other health issues that come when people get older. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, but in order for you to log into this computer, mm -hmm. you have to have a special card. It's yes. your ID card. Mm -hmm. So that is, how was <laughs> that? That's an experience in itself. Because right. I know you're accustomed to working on computers because mm -hmm. you're a senior over at Bookstone now. But how was that experience when you went there and to get the card? I mean, you had to go through the process. Actually, because the badge process takes so long in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. they made us go to Atlanta first, the, the local branch of FDA here. Mm -hmm. And um, I went through a security, fingerprinting, background check, everything just to get the <laughs> one badge. And with this badge, though, you know, it actually doesn't expire until 2023. Really? So I can get into the FDA securities, you know, um, access the library for as long as the badge is valid. Is valid. And so you all did the first step here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. So when you got to D.C., you were ready. Yes. And so when you got to D.C., tell me what happened. Did you go, it was this big place? Did you feel <laughs> overwhelmed? Did you have a workspace? How right. was that? What was There's that like? There's tons of different buildings mm -hmm. for the FDA. You know, they're all, it's actually in College Park, Maryland. Okay. It's kind of, it's right next to D.C., but it's in Maryland, actually. Right. Um, and so the kind of like Columbus and Phoenix City. Yeah, yeah, right next door. Right. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I I was in the Harvey Wiley Building, is what it was called. That's where the epidemiology branch is. Um, there's different buildings for different things, but ours is located there. Mm -hmm. um, but to get the badge, it was in a whole separate building. So we actually had to drive there and pick up the badge the first day. Really. And drive back, and then get accustomed to the building I'll be working in. Mm-hmm. Um, and so from there, I had my own little workstation. Really? Mm -hmm. So you had a cubicle? Yes. Is what we call it in the government. Mm -hmm. So you had a little space that was yours. Yes. And so you went there every day, or how, how was that daily? I activity? went there Monday through Friday. Really? And um, it was from about 7.30, 8 to about 4 o'clock. So a full day's work. Mm -hmm. Really? So you yes. were there with the regular staff? Yes. Really? And um, what was interesting to me is that they were very welcoming. and. Even though I was like a lot younger than them, mm -hmm. they still treated me as an equal in their conferences, you know, their meetings. They would take notes on things that I'm saying. If I'm 
um, need help with They something. value you as a team player. Yes. Yeah, as a member of yeah. the team. That is really wonderful. But you did a lot of work, and you are a hard worker. So when you left the office at night, mm -hmm. of course, I know you did go out and do a little sightseeing because your dad was there with you. But did you work some more on these projects? Actually, through the hotel, you mm -hmm. have to connect to their Wi-Fi, and then you have to do like a remote access VPN. Right. It's a lot of things to do, but mm -hmm. yes, I did do some work in the hotel. Yeah. I looked up some different case studies and did some more research on my own. Okay, and so they're allowing you to be here in Columbus, and mm -hmm. then you have to go back? Yes, I'll go back about September, October, present a poster to the FDA. You okay, know, now what's the poster? The Is it the same type of thing you did at the conference? Um, Similar? It's similar to that, okay. yes, but it's a different type of study. Mm -hmm. That was a research laboratory. Right, but it's the same process. You still it's have to do all of that research. Poster, and, yeah. right. Make the graphs, make the data representation, mm -hmm. um, portray it in the best way possible. Right. Um, and then I'll go back and present to FDA, you know, all of them at right. the FDA, not the just team. my branch. Really? So, so the, the whole organization? Yes. So you were having to put a lot of work into this while you are doing your senior year at Brookstone, <laughs> which is very busy as well. Right. Really? I have a lot of things to focus on, you know, SATs still, college applications, speeches for senior speeches, but it's okay because it, this is, you know, it's something I'd like to do. It's not like a busy, it's not. It's not a chore. Yeah. It's something that you really enjoy. Interested in. Right. And so you were just out for this search because you just have this thirst for knowledge. <laughs> and, and it's a good thing because we really need bright and brilliant people like yourself to lead the way. Mm -hmm. And I've already teased you about when you become <laughs> the Surgeon General, you remember that you were here first. This was your first TV appearance. Right. Well, what we're gonna do is take our final break, go to our sponsors and we'll be right back. Okay, we'll be right back after word from some of our sponsors. Sergeant Major Retired, Sam Rhodes or Kathy Rhodes. Freedom Printing, for all of your designer printing needs. Gunboat Plaza, Suite 18. Zeal in Uptown Columbus, where you can enjoy an intimate dinner atmosphere and every entree is chef inspired with passion. Dinner is served Monday through Saturday, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Howard Johnson Hotel, 1011 Veterans Parkway, Columbus. For an international dinner experience you will never forget, Zeal in Uptown Columbus. Progressive Funeral Home, family owned and operated since 1952. The George Ford legacy of high standards continues today in the compassionate and professional services provided. A touch of dignity for those who care. Progressive Funeral Home, 4235 St. Mary's Road, trusted by generations. Best Care, transforming minds and bodies leading the way in the latest techniques of medical weight loss and wellness. Certified in family medicine and bariatrics, Dr. Blunt is ready to assist in the transformation of your mind and body. Call today, 706-221-6477 or visit bestcarecolumbus.com. East Alabama Endocrinology, educating and caring for those living with diabetes in Alabama and Georgia, 1400 Bradley Lake Boulevard, 3320 Skyway Drive, Suite 602, Opelika. Take charge of diabetes and live your best life. History is important because it shows where you're coming from and where you're going. Type 2 diabetes is something that runs in my family, which means I'm at risk. In fact, one in three American adults are at risk for developing type 2 diabetes. And knowing this, if I do nothing, that family history becomes my family's future. And my family is too important to me for that. Take the risk factor assessment today at AskGreenNo.com. And welcome back to Straightforward. I'm continuing my conversation with the beautiful and brilliant Uma Alapan. Uma, you had something wonderful happen to you via social media. Yes. Share with our audience that because I'm, I'm so impressed with that because <laughs> usually we see all kinds of silly things going on on social media but right. something great happened to you via social media. Share with our audience what happened. Well through my Twitter account um, the American Society of Nephrology had a forum for all of its members to communicate 
Um, and so I, through that forum, I talked about my experience at the a American Society of Nephrology. Mm -hmm. And one of the people listening to my conversation was Dr. Edgar Lerma. Mm -hmm. And he said that he would be interested in interviewing me for the magazine. For the kidney news yes. that we have here on the table. Yes. Really? And because they thought a high schooler presenting at a you know international convention was very interesting for you know the yeah. community. Yeah, I mean that's big. But this happened via Twitter. Yes. Okay, so there are some good things that happen on social media. Yes, I still haven't met him in person. I'm really? I'm planning to, but all of it was done through Twitter, email, social media. Okay, and so when he interviewed you for this article, mm -hmm. um, was that via email, Twitter, or he did you actually have a voice conversation? <laughs> He sent the questions, right, and I answered them, mm -hmm. and then I sent them back to the committee. The kidney news committee edited it and sent it back to me, mm -hmm. and then from there we just kind of interacted until we got the final copy. And okay. They uh, they let me they let me present you know whatever I wanted to say, everything about my accomplishments there, my interaction with people there, everything about that. So they were very nice about that. Oh, okay. Including so everything. they got your input, you mm -hmm. answered, and you were able to trust them, which is a good <laughs> thing because they were professional because it doesn't always work that way in the media. So they, you sent it back, then they sent it back to you, you approve it and before it went to print. Yes. And so you all had agreed on the content and the, the conversation and that kind of thing. Yes. Well, you've done great things here in Columbus at your school. Uh, last year, you were one of the Scholar Athletes of the Week yes. here at this station. And you started the tennis team, uh, not the tennis, golf the team. golf team, which is non-traditional. Right. right. And so in addition to that, you are, what, starting up tutorials? Share with our audience the other things that you're doing besides all of this wonderful academic work mm -hmm. for the FDA. Okay. Well, in Columbus, Georgia, actually, I want to share my experience um, and help, you know, community education. Right. You know, go, to go to the various schools. Yes, so you want to reach out schools. to your peers. Right. Okay. And reach try to, to educate mostly them. Mostly the adolescents and children, like lower lower and middle school, mm -hmm. um, you know, to tell them about the negative health um, implications of phosphorus. Mm -hmm. You know, in the future, right now, if you have excess phosphorus, it's not going to do much of damage because your kidneys are still very healthy when you're young. Right. But as you get older, your kidney function declines and it can't you know, excrete that high amount of phosphorus. Right. And so... So you want to train our brains to not drink so much soda. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to start... Right. Have <laughs> I have that high phosphorus right. too. Okay. Start from an early age. So you're going to be doing um, community education at the various schools and community yes. events. And okay. also, you know, help them with science fair, mm -hmm. help them how to make a poster, how to present in front of people, what to talk about, how to go about doing an experiment, um, or just general help on science. I love biology. I love chemistry. You know, I'm taking AP Physics this year. Okay, what is that? <laughs> Advanced Placement Physics. Advanced Placement Physics. Yes, it's a college course that you're able to take from a high school level. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so you're taking Advanced Placement Physics yes. right now. Oh, wow. And so that makes you a wonderful tutor for those that might struggle with right. science. And so last year I took Advanced Placement Biology and Chemistry as well. So I have a lot of background knowledge on science that I would be, you know, I'd love to share with those younger than me. Okay. And so uh, at Brookstone, besides uh, being this wonderful scholar, athlete, uh, you play golf. Mm -hmm. I sing in the chorus as well. Okay. And I do a lot of musical competitions through the school as well. Last year we had a literary meet and mm -hmm. we went to the state level. Um, we represented our school there. I was in a trio. Um, and so I do a lot of musical competitions, piano, singing. And you dance. Right, yes. Right. Um, I actually do Kathak Indian dance is what it's called. Mm -hmm. I just received my Bachelor of Arts, actually. See, that's what I'm saying. You're so well-rounded because sometimes we all ha will have students that are just strictly academic or they're strictly the arts. And right. then, you know, they kind of struggle with the balance. But you are perfecting it all. I, mean, I like doing all of the activities I mm -hmm. do. I like having a balance of golf. I like, I like, you know, sometimes when you're tired or if it's raining outside, you know, you can just sing or you can just play the piano on your free time. You don't have to go outside in the weather or a different balance of things. If it's a nice day outside, I might go play golf, you know. So that flexible. gives you an outlet from some of the other, like the academics. You can take a break and play piano. How long have you been playing piano? 
I was actually in kindergarten when I started. Really? Yes. Same thing with singing. I actually started singing with my dad. Mm -hmm. um, we have a karaoke club. Really? <laughs> yes. Okay. Different people in the community, they come. And when I was very little, I just sang a song, and I was interested in singing, and it just developed along the years. So. Okay, and so you're playing the piano. Right. Oh, you're singing? Mm -hmm. And then what is the Bachelor of Dancing? It's, um, it's actually, I have a Bachelor of Arts in uh -huh. Kathak Indian Dance. Kathak? Kathak. Indian Dance. Yes. So if people want to Google that, they will be able to Google and mm -hmm. find out and see exactly right. what it's that is. It's a traditional is. Indian dance. Okay, is that something that you could teach yes. other yes, students? Yes. So, uh, in addition to going out and educating them on all of the health matters, mm -hmm. that's something else that's new and it's different that a lot of children might not have been exposed to. Right. So, but you have a degree in that, a bachelor's. Mm -hmm. So how long did it take you to get that? Um, I started dancing when I was very little as well. I started when I was three. Wow. I actually, I started Bharatanatyam Indian dance. It's a separate type of dancing. A different style. Yes, different okay. style. Um, and from there, I switched to Kathak Indian dance. So mm -hmm. since then, you know, I have to have you know something to show for it. Right. Um, and so now, basically, that Bachelor of Arts says that I'm able to teach others. You know, I'm not a student anymore. Okay, you're a professional. Right. As you're doing with everything else. I mean, you're just really you excel in everything, and that's that's really wonderful because it, it, you're well rounded, and and you're going to just be able to change the world. I'm very excited about that. So. We're going to be preparing to be looking forward to college and all of that. So what's your plan? We know you're going to be working with the FDA, but what's your plan once you leave Brookstone? When I leave Brookstone, okay, my brother right now is at Emory University. Mm -hmm. He's um, planning to major in biology, follow a pre-med track. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also like to do medicine. Okay. Um, maybe nephrology since I have, you know, background. And your from, mom's a, a physician. My mom is pediatrician. But she's a pediatrician. Right. Uh-huh. Yes. And so, but since you like chemistry and physics, you're probably I more, like biology right. a lot more than chemistry physics, but mm -hmm. I also like how chemistry and physics has a part with biology. How it all, all ties together. Yeah. Right. So you're looking at becoming a medical doctor as well. Yes. That's what you're on track for. Okay. Well, tell people how they can reach you if they want you to come out and do community education. Okay. Do you have a Twitter? They can hit you. I do have you, a Twitter. Okay. I have a Facebook. I have okay. an Instagram. All right. And so, Snapchat. <laughs> all right. So how are you listed? Is it oh. Uma Alapan? At Uma Alapan? Or what is um, it? It's a, uh, there's several different usernames. Okay. Um, Twitter, what, what Twitter. is it? Twitter, mm -hmm. I think it's Uma60,000. <laughs> okay, Uma60,000, and on Facebook you are? Um, you can search Uma Alapan and you okay. should find my profile okay. for a lot of those. Um, okay. And you can also get me at my school, Brookstone uh, School, through my email address. Okay. It's actually 18uallapan at brookstoneschool.org. Okay, so if they want to invite you out to do a community right. uh, presentation, conversation with young people, then you're for that and it's free. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'm so very proud of you. Keep up the great work and we'll have to bring you back so people can track all of this great success. Thank you so much. Thank you. All Thank right. you for having me. All right, this has been Straightforward. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Until next time, be blessed.